Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of GDDV 106 Development Concepts. My name is Kasanis. Guys, welcome back. This is again an episode of GDDV 106 Development Concepts, a course that I am teaching at Centennial College. During COVID, everything is being offered asynchronously. And we've already covered the idea of an introduction. That's what we've done really, and that's it. So this is really going to be your first real episode <laughs> of this particular course. Today, we're going to be covering the idea of Unity. We're going to take a look at Unity, what it's all about. All right? Let's get started. So what exactly is Unity? Well, Unity is the game engine that we're going to be utilizing in this particular course to do our game development. And we'll talk about game engines as we move forward as well. What we're going to look at though today is a practical look at Unity. That's what we're going to do today, a practical look at Unity. We're going to go into the actual Unity interface and we're going to talk about all of the different screens, all the different tabs that are available to you. We're going to start off by creating ourselves a 2D project or a 3D project, and we're going to compare those two. And I know there are more options than 2D and 3D, but this being an introductory course, I'd really like to focus on the basics. So the difference between a 2D and a 3D project, we'll take a look at the idea of projects versus scenes, and then we'll take a look at what is included in each of the default scenes. Afterwards, we're going to talk about the interface itself. So we'll take a look at menus, settings, panels, navigation, saving a scene, and saving a project. All right, let's head into Unity right now and take a practical approach to this particular lesson. Okay guys, so we haven't gone directly into Unity. What I've done instead is launched an application called the Unity Hub, and I'm currently using Unity Hub 2.3.2. What the Unity Hub does is it tracks your projects and it tracks the version of Unity that your projects have been written in. And this is great. So previously we had a bunch of different options and we didn't know, we weren't able to track this in any particular way. We'd open up a project and if we opened it up in the wrong version of Unity, it would update it or we'd have to back out. In this particular, with utilizing the Hub itself allows us to actually track our Unity projects and the Unity version that it's been written on. So right now, if I take a look at my installs, I have two versions of Unity installed. I've got 2019.3.0 F6, and I have 2019.3.0 B8. And you'll note right away that B8 is actually a beta version. So it gives me this information right away, and I know what versions of Unity I actually have available to me. If I go back to projects themselves, I can see the names of my projects along this column. I can see the version of Unity I used to create it in this column, the current platform it's aimed at, etc. and the last time that I actually used it. So the hub itself is great for allowing us to track the versions of Unity we're using, the, current, the versions of Unity we have available to us, and precisely which version of Unity our projects have been written in. I'm going to go ahead right now and create myself a brand new project. I'm not going to open up any of these. I'll create myself a brand new project. In order to do so, I'm going to go to the new button. Now with the new button, I get this brand new window. And you can see that under templates, I have five options currently available to me. I have a 2D, a 3D, a 3D with extras, a high definition RP, and a universal RP. We're not going to take a look at the last three today. In fact, we're not going to look at those uh, for a little bit. They are going to be offered to you, and we are going to discuss them uh, thoroughly throughout your time here at Centennial. But for now, I really want to concentrate on the idea of the 2D, the standard 2D, and the standard 3D, just as simple options as an introduction to Unity itself. So right now, by default, it comes in, and I've got 3D selected, and that's perfectly fine. We'll leave it like that for now. On the right hand side, I can see my settings and basically the settings allow me to choose a name for this particular project. So I'm going to call this, uh, I don't know, I should have thought of this before I started. Let's just call it simple 3D blank. All right. And you give it a location where you want to save it and I'll just leave that location right now. Okay. So I'm going to hit create and I'm going to wait a few seconds and Unity itself is going to launch. So there we are, we're initializing the project. A few moments later. Okay guys, here we are finally inside of Unity. I don't know how long it took you to open, however long it took to open, <laughs> we made it in. 
Anyway, let's take a look at this window. Let's take a look at what we've opened up here. For some of you, this is the first time you've ever seen Unity, so I'm gonna go through it pretty slowly. If, you've, if you're already familiar with Unity, then you can probably skip this the entirety of this particular video. This is really for people who have never worked inside of Unity before. We're gonna explore the interface. That's what we're gonna do here. If your window doesn't look the same as mine, you can head over to the far right-hand side and you're gonna click this drop down menu and you're gonna choose default. And that's gonna set up your default layout. The layout of your panels will look exactly like mine. Let's start off by talking about what we see in the upper left hand corner. Right now I can see it says simple 3D blank. And if you remember correctly, like two minutes ago, I created a project called simple 3D blank. That is the name of our project. Beside that is dash sample scene. And sample scene refers to the scene that we currently have open. Now, what's the difference between a project and a scene? The project is the entirety of whatever it is you are creating. It is everything that you are creating as a bundle. Scenes are a method of breaking up your project into bits of data, basically, or different sections of your project. Think of it as different sections of your project. There's nothing that defines how many scenes you have to have. There's nothing that defines what goes into a scene. Nothing like that. It's just basically a method of organizing your project. That's really what scenes are. Uh, for example, if you had a game that you were creating that had 10 levels, well, you could absolutely create 10 different scenes and each scene would be a different level. If you were creating a dungeon crawler and you had 100 different rooms, well, you could create yourself 100 different scenes, one for every single room, or alternatively, you could have just one big scene. It's entirely up to you. Uh, you will load in scenes as you need them. So the larger the scene, the longer it'll take to load. So the more information you have in a scene, the longer it'll take to load in. Uh, but the more scenes you have, the more loadings you're going to have. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be up to you to kind of think about how you want to create your particular project, how you want to organize your particular project. By default, whenever you start a brand new project, Unity will create for you something called Sample Scene. Besides Sample Scene, we see PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. And that refers to the type of build that we're gonna create later on. So when we decide to actually build ourselves an executable file, we're gonna create it for PC, Mac, or Linux standalone. Next to that, we can see the version of Unity we're using, and I'm currently using Unity 2019.3.0b8, the personal edition. So that's what we see up in the upper left-hand corner. Immediately below that, we see our main menu. This is our main menu right here. And we'll talk about a lot of these options as we move forward in this course. Just for now, understand that that is your, that is your main uh, menu system up there, your main menu for controlling all of Unity. Uh, let's take a look at file right now. Under file, we see new scene, open scene, save, and save as. All four of these have to do with the scenes themselves. If you want to create yourself a new scene, well, you click the new scene button. If you want to save your scene, well, you click the save option. And lastly, if you want to save it under a particular name, save as will do the trick for you. Okay, below that, we've got ourselves new project, open project, and save project. Guess what those do? <laughs> All right, so that's for your projects, awesome. Below that is our build settings and our build and run. By setting our build settings properly, we can change things like uh, where, what, what type of executable we're building, like what, you know, what platform we're going to be running on. Uh, we can change things like uh, the mouse pointer. We can change our splash screens. We can change a bunch of different things. And we'll take a look at build settings a little bit later on as well. Below that is build and run, and that is basically going to allow you to build your project, make an executable of your project, and run it right away. So instead of running it locally in the editor, you're actually going to build an executable, and you're going to run that executable right away so you can see what your actual game is going to look like, not through the editor. So the rest of this we'll take a look at as we move forward. We're going to be using all of these throughout this particular course. Immediately below that are a number of tools and these tools are going to allow us to manipulate our scene view. So what we're, what we're seeing within our scene is going to allow us to manipulate uh, those objects or move around the camera, etc. Okay, next to that right here is our play options. By hitting play, we are no longer going to be in our editor, we are now instead in our game and we're running our game inside of the editor itself, but this is what our game is going to look like. If I turn it off, well, we're back inside of the ability to edit our scene. Next to that are a number of different options. 
collab. It's kind of a, a simplistic way of actually collaborating built directly into Unity, which is really nice. Beside that is our cloud build options, our account, our layers. We'll talk about those things later on. And lastly is our panel uh, setups. And we've already seen this really briefly. I'm currently in the default panel, but there are a whole bunch of different kinds of panels that are available to you. Panel layouts, excuse me, panel layouts that are available to you. You might uh, have a particular one that you like. Uh, maybe you have a particular way of working later on that you say, I really like this, this particular method of working. I really like this layout. And you can save that option for your layout so, so that your workflow is, is the way you like it. Okay. All this section in here are our panels, our currently visible panels. And there are a billion panels, not quite. There's a lot of panels that are available <laughs> to be used inside of Unity. The ones we're seeing right now are the default panels for the default layout. Let's examine them. In the bottom left-hand corner is our project. And as I've already mentioned, our project is the entirety of whatever it is we are creating. Anything that's available inside of the project panel is going to be available for you to use inside of the creation of whatever it is you're creating. By default, Unity has for us two different uh, file folders, an assets file folder and a packages file folder. If I open them up, you can see that I can open them, uh, and we've got additional file structure underneath that. By default, I will have a scenes folder, which I saw right here, if I go back, there's my scenes folder. I can either click here to open it up, or I can click here to open it up as well. And basically, I'm just drilling down into that particular structure. Below that is packages, and your packages might be different than mine. It all it depends on what you've included inside of your particular uh, build or your particular project. So by default, I've got assets and I've got packages, and inside of assets, I've got my scenes folder where they've saved my sample scene the scene that they give me for free. And again, bad name. When you decide what you want to do with that particular scene, you're going to give it a proper name. Guys, I'm going to harp on this. You're going to want to remain organized. If you don't stay organized when you're building yourself a larger project, things can get really ugly and really messy. You might have you know, thousands of assets. You might have thousands of sprites and hundreds of scripts and, and everything else inside of your project, and it can get really messy. So stay organized, all right? And this is how you keep your project organized. So what exactly is this? What exactly are we seeing here? Well, this is basically a view into the file structure located on your local machine. All Unity does whenever you open up a brand new project is it creates a file structure and that file structure is then used as a storage dump basically uh, to <laughs> store all the information about your particular project. If I open up a file explorer, which I'll do right now, and here's my file explorer. If I open up a file explorer, then basically I can see that the structure is very similar. I save this under my particular, my particular directory under simple 3D blank. And here's my assets folder and here's my packages folder. The other ones, library, logs, project settings, and temp, you can kind of ignore those for now. Don't go in and play with them. Really what we're interested in is the assets folder. Now if I open up my assets folder, on my local machine, I can see I've got myself my scenes folder. If I open up scenes folder, well, then there is my sample scene. So it's basically just showing me inside of Unity, it's basically just showing me this file structure. That's all it's doing. If I create something, let's say I go back into uh, my assets folder and I right click and I say create a brand new folder, and let's say I call this, I don't know, scripts. Then later on, when I click on Unity, it's going to automatically update this particular view to show my scripts folder. Now, before I do that, I want to show you something. Anything that you create automatically has this meta file created as well. So I had my scenes folder, and there's my scenes meta. If I go into scenes, here's my sample scene, and I've got my sample scenes meta, fi meta file. You can just ignore it. Unity automatically creates it. If you accidentally delete it, Unity will recreate it for you, but don't bother. <laughs> Just leave it. So you can see that in my assets folder right now, I've created a brand new scripts fo folder, but there's no meta file associated with it. Once I click on Unity, it'll automatically create for me that particular meta file. So click and bang, there is my scripts folder. So you can either create things inside of the project tab or create things uh, on the actual in the, inside of your actual file structure uh, on your on your on your drive in your local machine, and it'll automatically show up here. 
If I want to create something locally inside of the editor, I have two options. I can either click this plus sign, which allows me to create a bunch of different things in here. So here's an option to click a, click a brand new folder. So folder, and let's say I create this, and this is my sprites. Well, then there we go. My sprites is there. I can also right click anywhere inside of this gray area right here, right click, and say create and go folder, and then I've got myself a brand new folder. Animation, ooh, I'll get rid of my folder first. You, animation, bang, and there's my animation folder. Okay, well, now it's gonna bother me because it's not a capital A. <laughs> animation, all right, there we go, animation. So anything I create inside of my project is automatically created in, on my local machine as well. So even if you, you know, crash, as long as you've created it, it's going to be still available for you on your local machine. Okay, so above our project panel is our hierarchy panel. And the hierarchy panel basically gives us a view of our current scene. That's what it's for. Our project tab allows us to see the entirety of our project. Our hierarchy tab allows us to see our current scene. Now, if I drop this down, I can see what assets are currently located in my current scene. As I've mentioned, sample scene is the name of the scene that Unity automatically gives me whenever I create a brand new project. This brand new project, this brand new scene, has two assets, a main camera and a directional light. Next to the hierarchy panel is the scene panel, right here. And this is my workspace. This is where I actually create and build things. This is where I'm gonna set up my particular scene. If I click on the main camera inside the hierarchy, it will automatically take me to that particular object here in this space. If I click on directional light, well, it takes me to the directional light. Alternatively, if I click on something in my scene view, it automatically highlights it inside of my hierarchy panel as well. So those two things are linked together. You'll also note that beside my scene panel in the default mode, the default layout is the inspector. The scene hierarchy, the hierarchy panel allows us to see and select or organize our objects inside of the scene. The scene panel allows us to create our scene, to actually create whatever it is we're creating. And lastly, the inspector panel allows us to see whatever it is that we've selected inside of our scene or our hierarchy. It gives us all the information we need to know about that object. So again, I've got my main camera selected inside of the inspector. I can see main camera and I can see all the information about that particular object. If I click on the directional light, well, now my inspector changes so that I can see all the information about the directional light. Awesome. So inside of the inspector, we're going we're gonna to be able to manipulate things about the objects in our scene. So for example, if I want to change the color of my light, there we go. I'm now making a whatever pinkish, pinkish light is now being, <laughs> being shone through my directional light. All right. So the inspector itself allows us to manipulate the objects inside of our scene, inside of our scene. Okay. Now, how do we go about manipulating 3D space inside of our scene panel? And that's the next thing we're gonna take a look at. So if you've ever worked with a 3D asset tool before, like Maya or anything else, well, m movement within 3D space inside of Unity is very, very similar in nature. I've got a multi-button mouse that I have connected to my computer, but I'm only going to need the three buttons uh, along the top. So only my left mouse button, my right mouse button, and the scroll wheel. All of those will do something for me. So let's take a look at what that means. Here I am inside of my scene view, and I'm currently in 3D space. I can see 3D space. Now, I created myself a 3D project. Remember at the beginning, I created a 3D project. That has nothing to do with 3D space. <laughs> it doesn't. It has to do with the, the default setup of your project, the type of camera you're gonna have, how your camera's set up, and, and what you're gonna be able to see within the space here and, and, the, and the light you have. I don't think you even have a light in 2D. We'll check for that in a minute. In 3D, you have a directional light and you have a main camera, and by default, we are set to be in 3D space. All right, that's kind of what it means. However, even if I'm in a 3D project, I can set it up so I'm only working in 2D space. That doesn't 
change anything. The project type you choose does not change how this is actually going to work. So if you've started a 2D project, don't worry about it. You're going to still be able to do all the things that I can do here. Just make sure that you're currently not set to 2D and you'll be able to manipulate 3D space. In fact, in fact, a 2D project has nothing to do with the type of asset you create. I can add 3D assets to a 2D project. I can add 2D assets to a 3D project. It has nothing to do with that. I can, I can still manipulate 3D space. I can manipulate my objects in 3D space in a 2D project. Nothing to do with that whatsoever. Okay? So let's take a look at how we move about in 3D space inside of our scene view. There are a number of different ways of doing this. Previously, we talked about some of the tools, or I pointed out these tools that were along just below the menu. So just below the menu, there are a number of tools. There's the hand tool. If I click it, I can move things around. There's the, the translate tool. There's the rotate tool, tool. There is a number of different tools within here that you can actually play with. Now, let's take a look. Right now, if I'm in hand mode, if I want to move things around, I can click on the left mouse button and drag it around. And you can see that now I'm dragging around the entirety of my scene. I'm dragging it back and forth and up and down. And all I'm doing is holding the left mouse button and dragging. Okay, awesome. If I want to rotate my scene, I absolutely can. I can use the right mouse button and the right mouse button is going to allow me to look around my scene. So right now I'm rotating the entirety of my scene. And if you take note, over in the left hand corner, instead of a hand tool, I now have the eye tool available to me so I can see right now that I'm looking around in 3D space. Okay, awesome. Let's take a look at what happens if I use the middle mouse button. If I click the middle mouse button and I drag around, well, it's doing exactly the same thing as the left mouse button was. So right now I'm dragging it around in 3D space. But if I use the middle mouse button as a scroll wheel, so it's my scroll wheel, I'm using my scroll wheel instead, it will zoom in and out. All right, so I'm able to zoom in and out in 3D space. All right, there's other options as well. If I hit Alt and my right mouse button, well then I'm zooming there as well. So, so there, there are a lot of different ways of doing things with your current mouse, a lot of different ways, all right? If I hold Alt button and I use my left mouse button, well now I'm rotating. If I let go of my Alt button and I drag around, well, now I'm dragging everything around. So there's a lot of different ways of doing things, guys. Stick with your three button mouse and stick with the simplest of the controls. Whatever it is you find easiest, go ahead. You don't have to use the Alt buttons or anything else. Like I said, the left mouse button will allow you to drag. The middle mouse button will allow you to drag. If you press it, it'll allow you to zoom in and out if you are scrolling, and the right mouse button will allow you to look around your scene. A few other options of immediately moving to something. You can click on an object. So let's say I'm interested in, let me put this on one of the other tools. Let's say I'm interested in this particular object uh, and my camera, but for some reason I am way over here and I don't see it anymore. I can no longer see my camera. If I have my camera selected and I hit the F button, the F button will automatically take me to that particular object and center it in my screen. Now I can zoom in closer if I want a closer look at it. Okay, so that's how you work in 3D space. Something else to take note of right here in the right hand corner is a view of our axes. It'll show you the directionality of our axes. You can click on any one of these to view from a very particular way. Let's say I want to view it from the Y. Well, or if I want to view it from the X, it's automatically rotating me so I'm seeing it from that single plane. I haven't moved into 2D space. I'm still in 3D, so if I zoom in and out or if I rotate around, for example, I'm still able to move around in 3D space. So it automatically snaps me to a particular axis. All right, let's focus on that. Okay, so that's basically how you move around in 3D space. Now the option here, uh, there's ne several different options you could have. In its most basic form, we are set up by default as shaded, which means any objects we create will come in shaded. We can set it up for wireframe and everything else as well. Play with that as you will. If you leave it in shaded mode right now, it's just going to show you your objects as if it has a material applied to it and it's shaded material applied to it. 
Beside that is our 2D, 3D toggle. So now I'm in 2D and now I'm in 3D. All right, that's a 2D, 3D toggle. We've got the ability to turn on and off our lights in our scene. We have the ability to turn on and off our sounds in our scene, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so that is manipulation of 3D space. Now let's take a look at some of the panels that we haven't explored yet, the ones that aren't highlighted by default. If we go down next to the project panel, you're gonna see something that says console. And the console is important once we hit play. Our information that we receive from the editor will appear on the console. Any errors that occur will appear on the console. Any, any log information, anything we've logged will appear on the console. So the console tab will really allow us to work our way through our game and really explore parts of our game as we have problems or as we've added information. That's what the console does. There are a number of different options in here. Clear deletes everything on the console. Collapse makes it so you don't see every single line. You see it as a, all the similar lines or the similar errors will show up in the same location. Clear on play means once you start hit play, remove all the errors that are currently there and produce whatever new errors were being produced at the time. Clear on build, same thing, but once you build, pause on error allows us to, if we actually hit an error, stop everything and take a look at what it is. Okay, awesome. We've already taken a look at some of the other panels up here. We've got ourselves our game panel and the difference between the scene panel and the game panel. Well, the scene panel allows us to actually build and manipulate assets, whereas the game panel shows us what we're going to see when our game starts to play. That's what it really is through whatever camera it is we have selected. I currently have my main camera selected. That's the only camera I have in my scene. That is the camera that I'll be using. So I'm looking through my main camera and that's what my player is going to see. Beside that is the asset store. And if I click on it, the asset store has a number of different tools that are available to you that are predefined. So people have created things and now they have them for sale or they're giving them away. And they're all things that you can utilize in your current project. You simply have to download them and they'll automatically be available for you inside of your project. We're going to explore uh, the asset store later on when we look at fungus. And if I take a look right now, let's just make sure fungus is right here. Fungus. Fungus. fungus is right here. Later on in this particular course, we are going to be utilizing fungus and it is available for the build that I'm currently using. Let's hope that when the course actually starts in September that we haven't <laughs> moved on and that fungus is no longer available. So fungus is absolutely available to us and we're going to be using that particular asset store package uh, in this course. So we'll explore that later on. And there is a ton of stuff in here. If you guys are building yourself something, you're, let's say you're a great coder, but you have no idea how to do art. Well, take a look for the art in here, right? It's not going to be your all your own game, but you know what? If you don't know how to do something, there's no reason to let that stop you. Go ahead and find the things that you want in here. And some of the stuff is free and some of the stuff is more expensive, like super text mesh for only $95, you know? If you need it, there it is. Don't go reinventing the wheel if you don't need to. So that is the asset store. And like I said, we'll be taking a look at that in a lot more detail in a future video, particularly the fungus asset package. Okay, one last thing that I do want to take a look at before we call it a day for this particular video is I want to take a look at how we can manipulate the different options as far as our layouts are concerned. Like I said, what we have here is the default layout. And if we don't want to use a default layout, we have a particular way we want to work or particular things we want to see, we can absolutely shift things around. So all of these panels can be pulled off. I can actually pull these things off and have floating panels. So let's say I don't like my game here and I want to always see my game down here in the right-hand corner. Well, I can click on game and I can drag. And as soon as I do, you can see that it's snapping to different areas on my screen. I can snap it anywhere I want, but let's say I wanna snap it right down here in the right-hand corner. I simply drag it over and I let it go. And now my panel has been moved from this location down here into this location. So if I'm using something all the time and I want to continue seeing it all the time, well, I can drag it into place. And as you just saw there, I can also make it bigger or smaller by dragging along the different cracks that are available here, the different splits that are available. So there we go. Let's say I want to make my game this big and I can always see it in this space. Okay, so completely manipulatable. 
Now, let's say I like this method of working. Let's say I do, I always want to see what my game view is showing me. Well, I can save this particular type of layout. If I go over into this option where it says default, this drop down menu, and I click, I have the option to save it the way you want it. So let's say I want to save this layout. I'm going to say save layout, and it's going to say, well, what do you want to call it? I want to call this, let's say I'll call it uh, Kasanis's layout. It doesn't matter what you call it. Give it a, give it a name. <laughs> That's a horrible name, right? If I had multiple people working on this machine and this is the layout that I like, then maybe I'd use Kasanis' layout. If you're working locally on your machine and you've got a layout where it's your game view, maybe you want to call this game view layout. You know, call it something smart. Not, not what I did. Save. And now I can always go back to it. So if I go back to default, here I am in the default view. And if I go back to mine, so Kasanis layout, it's right here. I'm now in Kasanis layout. Awesome. So you can shift back and forth really easily. And there's a bunch of different layouts. I recommend staying within the default until you're comfortable, until you understand what it is you want to do. Maybe you're an animator and you always want your animator up and you discover this is how I'm always working. I'm always opening up my animator and now I, I, I just want to save that so I can open it up right away. Then do so. But get used to it first. Understand what panels you're looking at and why you're looking at them before you do anything else. All right, guys. One last thing I'm going to show you before we call it a day. If I go over here and I say File, Save right now, this Save option is saving my scene. Whatever scene I have open, it's going to save that particular scene. If I've made adjustments to my project in some way, I can go File and Save My Project. Make sure you guys do that. If you don't save your scene, then you will lose that scene build. It's not like your project folder. Your project folder is, like I already told you, is located locally on your machine. The entire infrastructure for your project is located on your machine, but your scene is not. Your scene is a special file which we already saw here, a special file that Unity saves. If you've made yourself a scene and you've made a bunch of adjustments in that scene and you don't save it, when you come back, it just won't be there. All right, guys. I think that takes us to the end today. That's as far as I wanted to go as far as the Unity uh, layouts are concerned, as far as the Unity uh, interface is concerned. We're going to be using it super heavily. Anything I haven't covered, I can promise you we will be covering as we move forward in this particular course. Okay? So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. And if you didn't, a thumbs down is perfectly fine. If you don't like something, I want to know about it. So if you leave me a thumbs down, just make sure you say, hey, I hated the way you did this or whatever it is you want to tell me. I will make changes in how I'm teaching. This is really for my students. I'm building this for my students. Uh, but it's also for you out there. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's also for you. I want to make sure that I am producing educational information that everyone can utilize. All right, guys. So thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.